So the speech element can be one of the scariest part of the GCSE English language qualification, but it doesn't have to be that way. I got a distinction on my GCSE English language speech, which was about how Marvel movies are ruining cinema. And so now I'm going to show you how you can get a distinction or at the very least pass the GCSE speech as well. So first of all, when you choose a topic, make sure that it's something that you're actually interested in and that you can, you know, talk at length about. It has to be something that you're knowledgeable about and you're passionate about. Otherwise, you won't have anything to say. It can be a pretty niche topic and I think that is better because then there's more things to explain rather than just, you know, if you're making it on something generic where people have done it before so what you're contributing isn't very unique. So for example, two of the guys in my class did their speeches on why women are paid less in sports. And we only have eight guys in our class, so that's 25% of the people who did the same speech. And so if the teacher has to listen to the same speech twice, that's kind of boring, you know? So they'll, they won't mark you down, but they won't think of it as very original. Um, so make sure that you pick something that's, you know, unique to you and that you're actually passionate about. You also have to make sure that your speech isn't controversial, okay? Because there was someone, not in my year, um, but in another school who started their speech with to clarify, I am not a bigot. If you have to clarify that in the beginning of your speech, then the teacher won't like it and you'll have to redo your speech because you'll be like offending the teacher who won't give you as good of a mark and if your speech is sent for moderation, then your examiner won't like it. So make sure it's something that's not like offensive or controversial, but have some sort of like argument or debate around it. So my topic was um, why Marvel movies are ruining cinema. And that is kind of controversial, but it's very low stakes. So I feel like that's the kind of perfect topic that you can talk about. So when you're planning out your speech, don't worry about structure too much, you know? Just take notes, read about your topic, watch like YouTube videos, documentaries, read some articles or like some books if you have time and just write down what drew you to the topic, you know, what interests you. And you know, you don't have to cover every single nuance in that topic you just have to talk about the things that interest you because like i think the max speaking time is like 10 minutes or something like that so yeah that's really not that much time to fill so um just do the things that you're passionate about so now that you've got your plan and you've got your notes try to arrange them into a sort of structure don't worry about like an introduction or a conclusion and a beginning middle end just sort of arrange it so that there's like this like nice flowing structure and make sure that you if you're writing your speech make sure that you write it as though you're talking to a friend so like include anecdotes be funny include questions that's a really good way to like engage your audience so i think in the beginning of my speech, I asked people to like raise their hands if they've ever seen a Marvel movie before. And like, that's the kind of question where like everyone raises their hands, right? So um, yeah, try to have some sort of audience engagement while you're writing your speech. And now that you've got your sort of like flowing structure when you're moving on to like one topic onto the next, you can have your like introduction and your conclusion. So what goes in your introduction? You have to have like your thesis statement. So this is what you're going to be talking about in the rest of your speech. And if you want, if your speech, especially if your speech is longer, have some sort of signposting. So say like in, your, in my speech, I will cover this, this and this and be vague about it. Don't be like, um, you know, super specific because then that sort of gives your speech away and you're kind of wasting time and it seems a little bit boring. So just say like, I will talk about the economic, social and political effects of blah, blah, blah. And you have to have at the very beginning of your speech, a sort of like hook or something to draw your readers in. So you might have a joke, you might have like a short anecdote, you can have a quote, but that tends to be like, only for like really serious speeches. Um, you can have like a question like I did and then do the same thing at the end. So have like a short summary of what you did, leave them with something to think about and then have a sort of like ending hook. I don't know what like analogy to use for that, but just something to like leave your audience with. So like a question, a joke or like something that sort of like summarizes the tone of your speech. And yeah, in the main body of your speech, make sure you've got anecdotes, you've got metaphors, similes, statistics, 
all the different things that your teacher and your examiner will be looking for and that's very important to have you know the stuff that the exam board wants otherwise there's a risk that you might not check off all of the boxes and you know you won't pass or you won't get the merit or the distinction that you want so when presenting the number one thing you should do is speak slowly i speak very fast naturally because i debate and you know you have to include a lot of information in like an eight minute speech and that's not a lot of time um, for debating and so I just naturally adapted to that and started to speak faster and faster but that really affects the presentation of what you're saying so in, when I was doing my GCSE English speech um, my teacher made me stop and restart right at the beginning because I was speaking so fast that she asked me if I was nervous and I wasn't nervous it was just that my first run through of my speech was like half an hour long because I tend to ramble and don't do that by the way. So yeah, when you speak really fast, it tends to become difficult to understand, but also what you're saying gets like lost, you know, it's not as impactful. So when you look at the best public speakers, when you look at Obama, when you look at MLK, when you look at JFK, they are, you know, very slow. It's like three words per minute, which I don't know, maybe if you listen to like an hour of it, it would get kind of boring, but like the way they do it, is so like engaging and you hang on to every word rather than it being this like jumbled lot of sentences that you know go in one ear and out the other so another thing you should do is project your voice so that it's loud enough for everyone to hear don't like be really quiet don't like speak down here speak up and like speak with your chest if that makes sense you know um don't okay i don't know how to explain this but don't speak with your throat and your mouth speak like from your core um so like naturally your voice will like get deeper and it'll get like louder and you'll have that sort of projection so that everyone in the room will hear you but you'll also seem more confident and that's a really important thing make sure you also have good voice modulation so your pitch might get higher or lower depending on the context of where you are in your speech it might get quieter or louder or you might speed up in certain parts or slow down to emphasize certain words so personally, I believe that presentation is the biggest part of the GCSE speech because as long as you get your content to a mediocre or like slightly above average level, you can get a distinction as long as you present it with very, very good presentation because good presentation can make up for mediocre or even below average content, but below average presentation cannot make the best written speech seem good. And of course you do want both your content and your presentation to be like maxed out, right? But if you're worried about you know maybe your GCSE speech not being the best it could or if you really really want to go for that distinction then just max out your delivery because I swear it makes all the difference so if you want to overcome being nervous and I know this is like a problem that a lot of people face um you should have seen me when I first started debating I was like when I was like 12 or something um I was like physically shaking like my thighs like and my legs they were like this you know it was like a boiling pot of water um but now it's like fine so the best way to overcome delivery is just you know practice and practice and practice practice your speech in front of your friends in front of your family in front of your mirror i feel like that's something if you observe yourself doing it that helps you like become more calm um you can also do like meditation before and after or not after but before and like further before as you're like preparing for your speech um you can meditate right um and you can also journal to help you like work out why you feel unconfident and okay this is kind of like a self promo but i recently made an app it's called speak up right and it's got all these things like meditation um a journal and like a website where you can find guides to public speaking and um that can help you like overcome nervousness so if you want it's linked in the description and if you want you can download it you don't have to um but yeah if you want to like overcome nervousness and just like be really confident because that helps a lot, then you can download that. And so supplementing your speech. I don't know if other schools allow it, but my school let us do a PowerPoint um, like to supplement our speech. And I think I had a couple of like, I had a video in there, but make sure you're not including a video unless you 100% know it will work, right? 
um, because you don't want to be in the middle of your speech and trying to play a video and it's like not playing and you get nervous and it's like oh my god what am I doing you know that'll just like throw you off your game completely so unless you're hundred percent sure that it'll work don't include video or audio but yeah have like some questions have pictures have like quotes but don't have your entire speech and on your powerpoint and don't be reading it out okay so for my speech i made this like tiny little cue card which just had like the bullet points and the most important statistics um of my speech so it was like it was like this kind of size, right? So it was like, I think it was 15 minutes of content on there, but it was just the most important things and the things that while I was doing my practice, I kept forgetting, right? Because that's the kind of stuff that you want a reminder of. And instead of having like multiple cue cards or my entire speech written down, I just had my PowerPoint, which served as like a reminder or like a cue card of what I was going to like talk about next. And I remember at one point during my speech, I like blanked and I didn't know what I was meant to be talking about next. So I was like, blah, 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 blah. And then I like flicked the slide and I remembered because like I've got the cue card sort of on the screen. Um, right, so PowerPoints not only engage, like serve to engage your audience, but they also serve as a reminder to you. Um, but it is important to have some sort of like cue card or your speech written down somewhere. Don't have your entire speech written down and especially don't have it in like a really small font, okay? If you do want to have your entire speech written down, have it in like a really big font so that you can place it down in front of you and you can like look down and look up um, at the audience. Um, but I know some people like made cue cards, but they weren't really cue cards because they like just cut out a paragraph of their speech after having printed it out and like You're still reading it out, you know I think cue cards work best when you actually make them to be cue cards So I'll show you a couple of examples and I'll show you my system Okay, so I made like three different sets of flashcards for this debate But this is like my best set and this is the one that I used in the end and so as you can see it's like wait okay look at that yeah it's very bare bones there isn't very much stuff on it there's a lot of oh my okay my flashcards just fell on the floor but so here they are right it's very bare bones it's very blank it's a lot of like okay this is completely blank maybe this isn't the best example but there is a lot of like blank space and it's very organized once it's put into order <laughs> okay this is like a worse example because there is some crossing out to do but of course this is the bait so like you have to change it based on what the opposition says but see it's it's not full sentences and it is like notes you know so it's like times five times ten times fifteen um like this is just you've got arrows on there and there is a lot of blank space here not really because i was adding stuff based on what they were saying but you can still see like, you know, where you're meant to go and logically like, you know, here's the arrow, here's the arrow. And you can tell that it's listing and things like that. And so here where it's got more blank space, that sort of indicates to yourself, like, you know, I need to pause here. That's like 30 seconds onto like a flashcard, which has like maximum 20 words on it, right? And so this ended up being like a two minute speech and you don't need to have a lot of flashcards. And yeah, that's the end of the video. So you can check out my other videos on uh, getting a nine in English, like in general, the two English GCSEs. Um, hopefully I'll have that link somewhere here or here. I don't know. And yeah, see you sometime soon. I don't want to say next week because I don't know if it'll be next week, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and see you soon.